United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Bobby, roll call, please. Jessica Mead. Here. Andy Mary. Noel Deep. Here. Mary Newcomb. Here. Danny Pyatt. Here. Danielle Yushka. Here. J.D. Schrader. Jeannie Long. Here. And Mike Foley. Here. Consent agenda. We'll be looking for a motion, please. I move the board approve the minutes of the September 25th, 2018 meeting, financial report for September 2018, consideration of current bill checks number 9228 through 9351 in the amount of $212,504.38. ACH number 18190271 through 18190418 in the amount of $916,935.62 and one wire transfer in the amount of $20,679.57 for a total of $1,150,109.57. One minor correction. Uh, the meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. at 6 p.m. as well. from Dr. Deep, second from Ms. Mead, with the correction uh, to the time on the minutes noted that six instead of seven. Right. Thank you. Right. And I know that will get taken care of, so any question on any of those? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Right, uh, citizens' delegation, public comment. Good. Let me see if anybody signed in for me. Nope. Nope. Good Thank you. That takes care of your work for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes care of my work for it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, <laughs> We won't let you off quite yet. <laughs> student representative report. I see we have a new student rep board, Mr. Nathan Deep. Uh, we're not going to put you on the spot tonight for anything, but welcome to the board. I can you came prepared. <laughs> you came prepared. Let her rip. PSAT right. uh, testing took uh, place about two weeks ago. So the students said, love it. We'll get the results in about six to eight weeks. Um, tomorrow, there's a resource fair at the high school for our middle school students and high school students and their families. And they get the opportunity to learn about resources and services available for those with disabilities in this area. Um, this Friday, the high school drama club is traveling to Appleton to see a production called Something Rotten. Um, high school marching band took fourth place about two weekends ago at the WIAA state competition. So they took home for it. Um, girls and boys basketball is starting right after break, first week in November, with optional practices in the morning and evening, starting this week. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. We'll get you a meet plate at some point here in the future, maybe all official, but welcome. So, alrighty. Uh, new business, uh, Committee of the Whole. Are you looking for a motion, please? Remove the board for the I was thinking, wasn't Amy there at that meeting? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember Heidi being there. <laughs> so I think that was no. one just, change. I wasn't at the last. Was there. I wasn't at the last. So that was a correction I noticed. Oops. Yeah, no and problem. Jeff was there. So, but I think Kelly, Tom, Matt, you guys were all there. And, and Tim. Yeah, and it is noted within the no, minutes Kelly that Jeff made a presentation. Either. So mm -hmm. I think we're covered from that What's standpoint. That? Were you there, Kelly? Yeah. When are we talking about? The committee, the committee of the whole. Um, no, I don't think so. it was Were you no. there? No. Yeah, Clint was there. So then, and Amy. Yeah, so Clint and Amy are there, not Kelly and <coughs> Jeff. I don't know if that's important or not. 
It is. I, it is. We will have those questions. No problem. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Um, any other questions on the minutes from the committee of the whole? Uh, the motion was made by Ms. Mead and seconded by Ms. Payette. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Minutes are approved with the corrections. Uh, item B, New Clubs Policy 2340, reading number one. Uh, there is no action that needs to be taken tonight other than uh, it being presented as the first reading. If you Come across anything after going over it and you want to feel that there's something that needs to be added or changed you need to let administration know so those changes can be up if i may so what we did was um, we looked at neola's current policy which <clears throat> the board approved and we filtered it for what <clears throat> we had determined as an admin team we would like to see in and ran by the board the only um, everything in the two policies, the administrative policies, were appropriate. The only change that we thought we would add is what you see in the attachment tonight, and it is suggested that we add in the administrative guideline the language about piloting. That is specific to our district, and so that's the insertion you see before. Okay. Item B, number one, should the request be submitted to the athletic advisor and director and the municipal? Well, we thought about that too, and in our minds, it would go before because they meet so closely. Okay. So it would go before both of them, and it's okay if it's uh, Mr. Rogers because he would certainly share it. Okay, but that's a good question. We don't need any language if there's not an activity one year. We don't need to have that in there. So Mary had the question about, um, and we just used cross country as an example. So, and it's no secret cross country's numbers were down a bit this year. Let's say for whatever reason they're down again next year and the collective decision to, is made that they wouldn't compete or we would have a singular athlete or something like that. That does not mean they have to start over with a piloting process. That just means they're on a hiatus until members are back. Well, makes sense. All righty, well then, like, as I said, if you yeah, come across anything else that you feel needs to be changed or directed or whatever, Please advise administration and we'll take it under advisement and see what we can do. Okay. Um, before we go into board action, a request has been made to uh, flip items A and B around in the agenda. Is there anyone on the board that has objection to that? Okay. Very good. In that case, we will, yeah, please. Uh, I make a motion that we <coughs> swap items A and B on the agenda for this evening. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Mead, second from Ms. Yuska to uh, take items A and B and flip flop them on the agenda. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, in that case, on the board action, we'll first look at then item B. Uh, take a motion, quick here. I move the board approve the fiscal year 2019 budget as amended, including $30,700,797 in revenues from all sources and for all funds, expenditures of $32,200,000. $37,856 in all funds, including <coughs> the use of carryover and the use of fund balance in the amount of $630,000 for the HVAC project at New North and $270,000 for the purchase of classroom furniture. Awesome. Okay, 
motion from Ms. Mead, second from Ms. Long. Discussion? Yep. Mike, we've got several documents that have been uploaded to board docs, and um, I'll just kind of go in order of them. Um, I want you to focus right now on uh, budget revision summary, so that first document there. And what we're trying to do at this time of the year, we're trying to true up our um, revenues and expenses as we know them now, based on equalization aid that's been certified, our levy that's been certified, and our third Friday enrollment. So when you look at the top part there, you can see the changes in revenues. And I'll just point out that, um, so our open enrollment, that's gonna be open enrollment in, was less than we budgeted. The tax levy, um, the amount that we're levying is $245,593 greater than we originally estimated. Um, because our enrollment is slightly higher than we anticipated, we're getting more pu per pupil aid. Um, our equalization aid is down slightly compared to the July 1 estimate. And again, that number was supplied by DPI and um, when the final number shook out, we got a little less money. Um, a little, very little change in computer aid, and then there was a new categorical aid that we did not have, which was the exempt personal property. Um, that again, comes from the Department of Revenue. So we had additional revenue of $98,222. And then we show the expense side of it, and what I wanted to point out to the board is here's where we're, if you look down towards the bottom, there are really three numbers that I want to focus a little bit on, and that's the inner fund transfer, um, our special ed 011 account is up by 270,000 um, than when we budgeted originally. And again, we're basing our budget on July 1 estimates. And this, this transfer amount is really what we have for special education, what we're, what the business office is necessarily guessing at that particular point how we're gonna staff special ed and what that's gonna cost us to staff it. Now that we've got the majority of our staff um, hired and we know what insurances they're taking and everything, we had a, uh, a slight increase over what we had budgeted originally. And then we're showing the project at North and the um, furniture purchase. So that's why the two numbers are off by um, $900,000. And then we provide you with detail on what's going on with um, Fund 27. So what, what's happening, the $51,852,000 decrease, we get categorical aids on that Fund 27 011 area that we talked about, all that staffing that we get. We get an additional, we were at budgeting 25.5%. The state came back with a new estimate from since July of 24.5%. So we've, we've lost a little bit of money and that has to be made up in the Fund 27 transfer. Then the, um, the next couple of items, I, I don't necessarily want to go over them unless you have questions. One is an adoption format that provides you with a little more detail on the changes and the breakdown of the budget. The um, other one is a publication format, which is what we will post in the paper within 10 days of uh, passing this amendment. And then um, Don Schrader has provided a detailed summary of the changes in all the accounts from grants, food service, fund AD, and et cetera. What makes the tax loan different? Whatever that was, $200,000. When we get to the tax levy, JD, we can talk about that, but essentially what's happening is um, we don't know the Wisconsin um, parental choice program numbers. And um, we were estimating what those numbers were. The numbers were greater than what we had estimated. And then it, again, um, the whole revenue limit formula is um, the local tax levy and equalization aid. So our equalization aid was down a little bit. Um, it has to be made up by the tax levy. So it's a combination of those two things. So how much was the parental choice program this year total? Um, we'll get to that on the next, next item. And it's actually, I think if we, if I, if just give me one second, I probably can find it here. You're gonna go down to um, 
the 400,000 area in the budget revision. And we're going to be on the second page. Oh, it's a combination. It's roughly $400,000. So it went up 100 or something from last year. This thing under last year. Yeah. I've got the numbers on, uh, on the report and uh, on the tax levy. Okay. Run that through next is on the schedule. So. Any other questions on the documentation that Tim's already provided regarding the amount, amending the budget? Okay. Um, hearing none, we should take a roll call vote on this one. Mandy Mary. Yes. Noel Deep. Yes. Mary Newfeld. Yes. Jenny Pyatt. Yes. Danielle Yushka. Yes. JD Schrader. Yes. Jeannie Long. Yes. Jessica Mead. Yes. And Mike Foley. Yes. The amended budget is approved. <clears throat> okay. Then we will jump to back to the tax levy under item B. Be looking for a motion here as well. We also want to approve a tax levy of eight million three hundred and thirty five thousand to thirty four dollars with an estimated mill rate of seven dollars and forty eight cents per one thousand dollars of assessed value. Second. I'll give that one to Mr. Mary. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Mead, second by Ms. Mead. Mr. Byatt? Well, I, I, apparently I need to go ahead and have my hearing check. Thank you. Alrighty, so okay. second by Mr. Plant. Motion by Ms. Mead. Alrighty. Um, yep. So this? let's go ahead and pull open that tax levy 1819 final. And um, in this document, um, I provided you a little history of where the tax levy has been and then break the tax levy down. And um, you can see where we've got the general fund that. Seven million seven hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred nineteen dollars. And you can see the, the decrease there. And then we've got the prior service loan. We've talked about that. That was the prior commitment that we refinanced for an obligation for the state retirement system. That's under the revenue limit. We have the community service um, for the aquatic center on Fund 80. And then I make a note on the bottom, um, the footnote for footnote one that the tax levy includes a private school voucher payment and the impact amount there. So you can see that our um, actual mill rate will go down 35, <coughs> approximately 35 cents. So I often get calls uh, particularly when they see that we're like in the, the journal will report that the tax levy is going down and I provided you with a breakdown by municipality and um, if you want to pull that one open and I've highlighted a couple comparisons so let's focus on last year first and if we look at the town of Anago Last year we said that taxes were going down and we apportioned the taxes based on the equalized value of the municipality and, and I don't do any of this work, this is all from the Department of Revenue. And if you look at, if you look at the town of Anago, they went up almost one full percentage point of, of the apportionment. And even though everybody else's went down, their value increased, so their piece of the pie got bigger. And those residents, their taxes did not go down, their taxes went up. And then it's all relative is um, did you, what's your own value basis your neighbors. So now if we, we carry that forward and we look at what's going to happen to the town of Anago <clears throat> this year, we can see they went from 9.7% of the apportionment down to 9.4. And if you look at their decrease, instead of being an average of, of a decrease of, I think it's 2.14, theirs are, as, a, as a, a township, 
are going down 5.5%. Conversely, if you look at the city of Hanago, theirs are going to go um, up slightly. And you can see Anago is 31.7% last year. Now their piece of the pie, because their home values have gone up relative to the rest, um, their piece of the pie is 32.7%. So they're actually going to see a 0.87% increase. So if you get calls, you can either direct those people my way or open this document and it will explain why people's taxes are going up or down. Any other questions to Tim on that? Okay, hearing none. Uh, let's do roll call this on the line. No, Dave? Yes. Mary Nuko? Yes. <clears throat> Danny Pyatt? Yes. Danielle Yershka? Yes. Jeannie Schrader? Yes. Jeannie Long? Yes. Jessica Mee? Yes. Andy Mary? Yes. And Mike Boulder? Yes. We'll jump now to item C, uh, resolution authorizing a taxable tax and revenue anticipation promissory note for cash flow purposes in an amount not to exceed $650,000. I move the board approve resolution 2018-01 to approve the motion for Ms. Mead, second for Ms. Law. Let's have some discussion. Um, I want to apologize to the board for not getting these documents loaded up last week. I um, sent the uh, letters of commitment to three local banks and received one letter of commitment back from Covantage. And we had the date that they had to be back because our time frame, this should have been, I should be working on this in September and I just didn't get to it. And then I got approval at the Committee of the Whole and we talked about it, so I, I really only had two weeks to get it in. And you know we're asking for a loan commitment of 650,000, and I needed every single hour to get this done. So I received a commitment from the um, Co-Managed Credit Union, and the document that I'd like you to look at is the resolution. So the first part of that document you'll see is the, the formal resolution that um, Quarles and Brady is asking the board to approve. Then the next is you page down through after the signatory page of the formal resolution. You'll see the letter of commitment, the terms of commitment for co-vantage. And um, what's important is that the terms run from now until we can make our last draw on June 30th. And we have to have it, anything we draw on by June 30th has to be paid back by November 1st. The terms of the agreement there, they have listed um, um, it's the Wall Street Journal Prime Index minus um, three quarters of a percent. And I provided a document, a rate comparison document that I've used in prior years. So if you want to pull that open real quick, um, I give you a little history on here. So just give me a nod when you have that one open. Okay. Normally I have multiple banks and they use different <coughs> forms of setting the interest rate. And Covantage uses the Wall Street Prime, and I give you the definition of what, how they base that rate. <coughs> and in that first column, if you look at it, we've looked at the current month, the prior month, last year at this time, and then two years ago what we were paying. And I just provide that for background. So you can see what Covantage's loan rate has gone to. So we've gone from the 2.5% interest to 4.5% interest rate. Um, we're going to be, if we need to borrow, it's going to be that last payroll in November. And we're going to be in and out of that because we start getting our eight payments in December. And we'll be out of it within two weeks, so we'll be in and out. Um, the cost of interest, you know, if we take a half a million out of there, you know, we're looking at under $2,000. So it's 
I think it's a really prudent way to uh, do our short-term borrowing. In the past, we used to use a tax anticipation note, and we would borrow a million and a half dollars and try to invest that money, and we'd borrow it for the whole year. This is a much simpler way of doing it, and it's just an in and out. We may, we may also be in and out in the second payroll in May. Tim, on the, on the rate comparison, will be more rates, is that? Um, normally, um, some of the other commercial banks use that as their index. since we didn't have any, I didn't include it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone uh, with any questions on that? Uh, since it involves a lot of money, Bobby, let's do a little call one more time, please. Mary Newcomb? Um, yes. Danny Pyatt? Yes. Danielle Yushka? Yes. J.D. Schrader? Yes. Jeannie Lana? Yes. Jess Kameen? Yes. Andy Mary? Yes. Deep. Yes. Mike Folding. Yep. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Alrighty. Uh, item D, substitute teacher rates. Motion, please. I move the board approve the following rates for substitute teachers. Half day, four hours, $60. Half full day, $120. Long term for 10 consecutive days, $150. Also, after 25 days first, the rate of pay will equal $130. And after 51 days, the rate of pay is $140. Second. Motion by Ms. Yuska, second by Ms. Mead. Discussion? I think we hashed this over pretty good in the community. Yeah. Is the rate for a half day is not going to change? It's just always sixty dollars. Even if people do more than whatever that was, twenty-five days. Right. Anyone else with any questions? Well, I guess our primary motivation was just we were having a hard time getting subbed, and so we were afraid the pay would get more. Right. We did have a training on Monday. Al Betri came from CISA 9. We trained six support staff members throughout the district and two community members for a total of eight to add to our pool. It went very well. Um, so we're making strides. How big is the pool? I wish Melanie were here to answer that. How big is the pool? <laughs> yeah. Not, not big enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, the pool is never big enough. Right. I know 20 plus is a bad day that we, um, when we have 20 or more subs, we simply can't fulfill it. Well, hopefully, this will help us do that. I ran, into, I ran into a retired teacher who subs in the parking lot on my way in, and he asked that we make it retroactive for the last 10 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Item E, youth options. Clint, you're not off the hook. Um, what you see before you is the uh, the list of courses that students have signed up to take um, through MTC that is up for approval. And I wanted to delineate or define youth options compared to um, the core. And youth options is taking course credit that we don't offer at the high school through NTC, and then um, co-op is work opportunity and YA, or youth apprenticeship is work opportunity through um, a spe specified apprenticeship program. So what questions do you have on either of those three topics? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, 
for courses we don't offer, yes. can they take anything in the NTC catalog or are they limited to certain things? Um, that's a good question. Or like if there is a requirement, like some of like electricity classes or something, if you're not 18 year old or in that not requirement, um, are, they, are they bound by that? They, they are, you, the reason for youth options is that provide opportunities that we don't offer here. Um, and then we have to abide by certain NTC's guidelines because they're, they're, they're a college student. You know, and they're, they're also a college student in our dual credit programs. Um, they're not often, they don't often recognize themselves as that, but they really are because they're taking it for college credit. Um, so we, have, we do have to abide by certain guidelines that they have, but I haven't heard of the age being a factor at all in those ventures. How, how do we promote it? Do we say, kids, go check this out and see if there's anything? Like I, when I was in high school, I took a couple of classes there during high school, some computer hardware ones, but I can't remember why I ever wanted to do that. Um, you, usually through scheduling conferences, I mean, that happens. Is, as far as how their what their career path is, and we're getting a better handle on that with college and career readiness in terms of offering that as an option. Um, I often push it with students, but all class meetings at the beginning of the year as well. Um, we mentioned that we just had Green Heck in, and this is for the youth apprenticeship piece. But we just had Green Heck in to offer to look at that opportunity. You know, and all class meetings, I would say, for both of those programs and co-op opportunities as well. You know, co-op is for a student who will come, I've got a job at XYZ, you know, whether it's Dairy Queen or this farm or whatever it is. Um, but that YA gives you options for, that are usually specific to a, a, a job, a career path that that student is traveling down. And then the the NTC, um, or sorry, Youth Apprenticeship is the, the opportunity to go on a career path. Youth Options is that, you know, I'm even getting confused. Youth <laughs> Options is the, the NTC part that takes the college credit that we don't offer. So can you, did they just miss their normal, like, if I had choir or something during the No, it's day, scheduled we, into their day. It is scheduled, okay. So for like when I was here, I just skipped physics twice a week or something and went to the tech. And then I had all of the Yeah, we don't know. There, it's scheduled into their day. So they may start their day out there, and their day out there is usually what we've had at that time. It just seems like if people are complaining that high schools, you know, you're learning things that aren't practical for life, this would be something that you'd get more kids that, that doing. You know, I think we'd have 50 or 100 kids trying to go out there. And, you know. Well, but there are certain challenges with that, too. You know, um, some people want to. If the course is only offered at the end of the day and they want to stay here for sports or any after school activities, I mean, that, that's a challenge to them. Sometimes they take the <laughs> class that they have here. Um, but it is something that I think is a great opportunity for kids. And we'll, we'll definitely continue to push it into all, all school meetings or all grade meetings. What other questions are there around those options? The reason why I explain those, all of those things is um, sometimes people have a hard time defining the difference between those co-op, youth apprenticeship, youth options, and dual credit. How, how is it with Greenhack? Are students gonna drive from here to Wassa? There is a, you gotta have a car, you know, and for Greenhack, now that is where the age comes in, um, but they're working on it with the union and yes, they would have to drive over. But if that is where the career path is, I know we have one student who is going to apply. I just talked to her today, and she is, that is, she was extremely excited. She was one of the ones who gave Green Heck the tour when they were here. And we've got to get one person in there to be able to communicate, you know, what all the options are there. Because I mean, there's a, there's a ton of jobs there. And they're a new partner on, coming next fall, which is positive, but yeah, they would have to drive. What is the job going to be that she's applying for? Um, she's going to go for welding. 
work. Yeah. One one other thing, JD, they're getting really creative on how they get kids interested in this. Um, I just talked with Mike Friesick, our metal shop teacher, and he said that MTC actually has a semi trailer now loaded full of, you know, probably three quarters of a million dollars worth of cutting edge, whether it's CNC mills or lathes or whatever metal equipment that there is out there, that they're going to bring to the, to the school, um, hopefully this, this early spring, so that kids are right on campus and they can, they can walk right out of their high school classroom onto that trailer, experience that and get an interest that way. So, well, that's just one thing that I know and it, it's forever changing in that, those trade industries. I also want to toot our horn a little bit for the high school because we got feedback from Greenhack by saying that this was the most organized and well-planned visit that they've had in a high school and they're requesting that same format from other high schools as they go and promote that. So that's a, a credit to everybody here. And since we put the cart in front of the horse on that one, let's uh, put a motion out there first. I can move the board up. Those the youth options, MTC course options as presented. Second. Motion for Dr. Deems, looking for Ms. Yuska. Needless to say, we've had some pretty good discussion on this already. And I can see where uh, I don't think we have anybody here that can teach radiographic procedures. And, and, and those are things that, you know, yeah, they already but have a heads up there. Yeah. They, they come to the hospital and some of these kids, and I, I know the couple are doing that. And the same thing with the CNA, they are already out there uh, getting their training, and some of them are out there uh, as soon as they're out of the high school. It is extremely motivating for the kids, too, when you when you forecast all of those, all of the money that they would save on that, and parents are like, <laughs> and I, and I maybe, maybe you need to sell that product a little bit more at the parents' uh, night or whatever when you have it. Uh, maybe we need to have a different session for uh, uh, parents. Or, you know, we have that initial introduction in January when the kids are in eighth grade and they're coming. But after <coughs> that, it's almost until junior year or senior year, you don't sit down with the parents and talk with them. So maybe somewhere in between uh, at the end of their first year, beginning of their second like year, conference thing. like like a little conference mm -hmm. thing that you can have and say these are the options and you know maybe sending something. I don't think you need to send it to the kids because they won't give it to the parents anyway. But <laughs> some 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 way that you can actually you know the, the, the point that you made about you know it's going to save you a lot of money there. My daughter did one of those NTC dual credit things and you know if you got uh, six credits, I'm like wow. I just got a couple grand here that I can save, and you know, if if you did um, two or three of those courses and you got a whole semester off, the public university are saving about ten thousand dollars. So maybe putting that dollar amount there in front of yeah. parents might be good. Way. If, if NTC is and able to promote those courses, we have them. We have the number of credits and the amount of dollars that are saved. They give us a little certificate every year that has that information on it's in the office right now. And you can share that with the parents? Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Cool. Good idea. And we have it this year. I don't know what it's been done in the past, but we have it this year. So that's a good idea. Any other discussion on this? I have one question. Yes. Is this for just seniors? No. Or anybody can? Um, it's usually juniors or seniors. Juniors or seniors. Because sometimes okay. they have to have some prerequisites for some of those classes. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion. Thank you, everyone. Item F, NTC agreement for dual credit opportunities. Motion, please. I move the board approve the NTC dual credit agreement as presented for the services provider for the 2018-19 school year. Motion for Ms. Yuska, second for Mr. Pye. Discussion. Well, yeah, let's have some discussion. Clint, are you going to find this one? On the dual credit piece? Yeah. Yep. The dual, dual credit is just when our teachers are teaching the course curriculum from um, the college campus and TC. And um, for example, psychology is a dual credit class. We have 
some math classes that are dual credit. And they, as long as they um, are meeting all those course expectations, they receive college credit for that. Um, now, AP classes are, you take our high school AP class, and then at the end, you can take your test. If you pass that test, you get college credit for it. That's another one to throw in the, all the little actions and stuff. There. Yeah. It looks like there's roughly about 23 or so courses that are dual credit. And we're looking at, um, I had a meeting with Brooke Schindler, the, um, a gal from NTC, and also I've been in communication with Tracy Raven, Robin, Robin, from NTC as well, over, like, I wanted to know, like, what kind of low-hanging fruit do we have of, of something that we could try to connect and offer another dual credit option there, um, and which led into some teacher certification and things like that, so teachers have to meet certain <coughs> qualifications to be able to teach that dual credit course or be working towards some certain qualifications to be able to teach those dual credit courses. Interesting, in the, the letter they sent, you see where it says that uh, last year there were 1,182 credits earned with a tuition savings of $175,408.80. Those are the stats. That's pretty phenomenal. I mean, those are the stats, yeah. Nice to hear you. What do you share of those? What do you actually do it, but uh, kid, how much it will save or something that you break it down? I'm quite sure there will be a lot more parents who will be encouraging their kids to go and talk about it. I tried to get my daughter into one where she's only in sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> nice well, try. Does it, does it hurt? <laughs> Keep working on that. Yeah. <laughs> So did she say no, or did the NTC no. say no? <laughs> <laughs> right. Any uh, further discussion on this? Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Very good. If you, if you have any future questions out there or anything, we know where you please live. let me know, because that is a huge, that that's a huge passion that I have that we really need to move forward in this. Well, maybe we can write an article or something for the parents in the newspaper. Yeah. That's a missing link that we need to connect. You can work with the lady in the front row on that. They quite not that. There you go. Alrighty, moving on to item G, cheer team. Looking for a motion, please. I move the board approve the annual cheer and dance team as a school sponsored club. I'll second that. Motion for Ms. Yuska, second for Ms. Long. Uh, any discussion? I think we, they gave us a fairly substantial presentation at the, at the home meeting, and we kind of know where everything is at, and they've done a pretty good job as far as I'm concerned. So. Mm -hmm. To see them all there at the end. So. No, I don't want to make any assumptions, but they, we haven't, we've only done the first reading of the uh, administrative mm -hmm. guidelines, but I assume that they will fall under that club policy. Correct. Yep. So, any other questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. They are now a school sponsored club. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> MH, scoreboards, looking for a motion, please. I move the board accept the bid from Songworks Systems Inc. in the amount of $50,200 as for scoreboards for the high school greenhouse. Second. Motion from Dr. Deep, second from Ms. Yuska. Discussion. Okay, it says the quotes are per one scoreboard, but we need two. So are we voting on? We're voting on two. On two, okay. For sure. All right. One on each end of the field house. Let's Correct. Do it. And these are the big screen yep. ones that we were discussing. Yes. I'm just I'm just curious why the uh, 
if there, what the difference was with uh, dream systems being so much more. Um, did they offer something that somebody else didn't that wasn't needed, or? Yeah, and I kind of alluded to that in uh, maybe the whole when I commented that it was kind of hard to find exact comparables. Typically, when we try to put a, a, a bid out, that's why these are called the locations because we try to put a bid spec out there that all manufacturers can follow. These are somewhat relatively new and unique, and um, there's some technical lingo that I can't really explain, so I won't share it. Um, <laughs> that varies a little bit on the model and the manufacturers, and then just overall size of the whole LED array that would okay. be assembled. So. Bobby, let's do roll call since this is expensive. Jenny Pyatt? Yes. Danielle Yushka? Yes. JD Schrader? Yes. Jeannie Long? Yes. Jessica Mead? Yes. Andy Mary? Yep. Nolte? Yes. Mary Newfield? Yes. And Mike <coughs> Dudley? Yes. The other thing, Freddie, right? We talked about at the committee the whole that this money is coming out of the athletic budget that they saved up for hosting conference championship games. Not out of our money is already set aside for this. So, good deal. Thanks for bringing that up, Jay. Good point. Um, overnight trips for athletics. The board approved the overnight trips that are presented. Second. Didn't know it was there. Okay. Good. I want to make sure. Didn't hear over here. I want to make sure. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you need a board supervisor on these trips. If we should be able to Yes. It is just since we're having some discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there are some upcoming gymnastics trips that are going on. Oh, I was thinking of Germany and so <laughs> those are <laughs> 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 There are uh, five gymnastics trips coming up, uh, one in December and a few in January and February, basketball to Platteville in December and a wrestling to Oshkosh in December where the teams do need to stay overnight. And uh, I was approached by Mr. Schofield to asked about this and I said you know, it's a good idea to get on the agenda to Nevis and Neola yep. policy change. So he's policy, following policy mm -hmm. to make sure that the board is aware of it. So these are all paid for by the booster club? That I can't answer. I'll be signed on the I think so. We would be providing transportation to and from the event like any other event. But the hotel lodging, if let's say if these are a lot of our holiday tournaments, the, the lodging would be supported by the booster club. Yeah. How does that work for the bus driver staying overnight? Do they get paid while they're waiting? We they get an hourly rate and I don't know if it extends beyond a certain like an eight hour day. Wouldn't that be the responsible as a bus company anyway? It is, I don't know the specifics on it. I'd have to really review an invoice to see what they do specifically for each one. Um, and depending on the transportation needs of the, the team to and from the event, they may be able to come back to town if they're close enough. Yeah. Alrighty. So like this trip to Platteville, this is one overnight. The bus driver is also there. I would think so, Andy. And we're paying that at whatever rate a uh, school bus would cost us. Not a we're bus. going to pay the typical standard for the miles and distance. The <clears throat> that, yeah. It's a funny way they can come back. Don't Yeah, it's about a four-hour drive. And you got to figure that 
the games are probably not going to get over until later in the evening anyway. So. And then Matt will sit down, with, or Tom will sit down with uh, the team and say, you know, we have X number of um, tournaments you can be in. And it's not that they can just load up their schedule and do so many um, non-conference and tournaments and there's a limited number of travel opportunities for each club that are paid. And any that are above and beyond that, they have to come up with all of the money themselves. Any other questions on these? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the overnight trips as presented, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Madam J, new hires. Move motion, please. I move the board approve the hiring of Tanya Hall, administrative assistant, payroll effective October 29, 2018, at a rate of $18.91 per hour at Mary Krause, Art Teacher Spring Valley North at $37,000. $68 annually prorated on a $50,000 annual pay. Second. Motion from Dr. Deep, second from Mr. Pye. Uh, discussion? Services and buildings and grounds, effective October 26, 2018. Mara Lewis Payroll Benefits Specialist, effective October 23, 2018. And Linda Jones Food Service, effective October 1, 2018. Second. A motion for Ms. Yuska, mm -hmm. second for Ms. Law. Um, any discussion on this? I don't know Savannah and I don't know Linda, but Laura was very helpful when I retired and had questions and still had questions. She was, and I'm sure the other two were also very good at their jobs. Um, I was sorry to see this. in favor of approving the resolutions, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries, and we thank the former employees for their time with us and wish them well in their new endeavors, whatever they may be. So, item L, donations. I move, the board, I move the board accept the following donations. $700 from the Annie Gotator Trot for elementary track and field. $25,000 from Andy L. and Leon Sheldon Charitable Trust for the Aquatic Center. $200 from Cobanage Credit Union for the Fellowship Christian Athletes. $150 from Vault Companies for Fellowship Christian Athletes. $100 from John and Judy Schrader for the Fellowship Christian Athletes. $25 from Langley Ford for Fellowship Christian Athletes. $50 from the Eye Clinic of Wisconsin for Fellowship Christian Athletes. $300 from Langley County Farm Bureau for FFA Day on the Farm. $350 from Black Hawk Hill Horse Park Incorporated for the FFA Rodeo. $602.75 from Zotus and Northwoods Vet for FFA. And $250 from Ronald and Myra Nye for Fill a Backpack. Total donations, $27,727.75. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we have a motion from Ms. Newfeld, second from Dr. Deep on all the donations. Once again, our community has shown their generosity. Mike, if I could just comment about the Sheldon Trust. Go for it. Um, we've received from the Sheldon Trust since probably about 2003, anywhere between twenty-five and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually. So they have been just an extremely generous um, trust for the, the aquatic center. Pretty amazing. <coughs> Very amazing. Is that discretionary? Like every year, do they pick those aquatic center? Um, right I, into the we we they have a, a grant application that you fill out. And um, they've just chosen to give it to the aquatic center, but other people make applications to them as well. It's good to see that they're so very generous with mm -hmm. the district and our community as a whole. So. Okay, can I? I'm going to ask a question. Is something going on this month, or something that all of these donations came in for the Fellowship Christian Athletes? I don't remember I don't seeing. Maybe, I mean, because maybe, like maybe all those of a sudden, kids were active. maybe that club, whichever it is, maybe they must have set themselves a target of going out to all these yep. businesses okay. and soliciting okay. donations. That's what I assumed when I read it. Okay. Yeah, that's very possible. Good for maybe that's what we need to tell the other clubs. <laughs> <laughs> every, every month is designated at so and so clubs. So whichever club, yeah. So that very. month, you don't answer any phone calls from. <laughs> 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 Any other questions or comments on the donations? All those in favor of accepting them, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries, and we thank everyone who donated to the district, no matter how large or how small it is, and it's greatly appreciated. And we appreciate the support of our community. And all that being said, that it concludes the Major business portion meeting tonight, and we will be looking for a motion to go into closed session. So Consideration of a motion to adjourn the closed session pursuant to section 19.85 Param G of the Wisconsin State Statutes, conferring with legal counsel for the government body who is rendering an oral or written advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to be involved specifically in the sale of the Matuan School Building and an insurance claim filed against the USDA. Yeah. Uh, the motion from Dr. second to Mr. Bobby. We've got the other one to go first. Uh, roll call vote, please, Bobby. Who is the motion? Please. Motion was uh, Dr. Deacon. Second. Uh, second was by Danielle. Danielle, you're Yes. J.D. Schrader. Yes. Amy Long? Yes. Does Kimmy? Yes. Andy Mary? Yes. Andy Mary? Yes. Noel Deep? Yes. Mary Newcomb? Yes. Danny Pius? And Mike Folding? Yes. We are, we are officially in closed session. All those in favor of coming out of closed session, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. Motion carries. As an action of the closed session, we, we are back and open. So, announcing the actions of the closed session. Number one, we denied the insurance claim that was filed, and we're proceeding with the Twin School situation. Direction was provided to the attorney. Direction was provided to the attorney. Motion to adjourn. Motion for Mr. Bryant, second for Ms. Long. 